What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we are starting our Tableau tutorial series. Now this series is for absolute beginners, so if you have never used Tableau before, you are in the perfect place. I'm going to take you all the way from the very beginning of installing it and just understanding what Tableau is and how you can use it, all the way to creating dashboards and sharing it. Now, personally, I hate those videos that are like three hours long and they just expect you to go through it. Uh, I like to break my videos up into chunks. So if you have ever done my SQL tutorials, you'll know that I like to break things up so it gives you time to try them out and do them yourself and then you can move on to the next video. So I'm gonna be breaking this up into five separate videos. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Tableau for free. I'm gonna show you the user interface. We're gonna download a data set that you can find on Kaggle, and then we will build our first visualization together. With that being said, let's jump over my screen and we'll get started. All right, so the very first thing that we need to do is you need to actually download Tableau. So we're not gonna be using Tableau, we're gonna be using a free version called Tableau Public. It has a lot of the same features, except of course it's not uh, every single feature that regular Tableau has, but it is absolutely perfect for learning it and for using it and, and you can even build um, you know, dashboards and share those for your portfolio. Um, I'm gonna put this link in the description so you can just go and click on that and, and all you have to do is input your email right here. We're gonna click download the app um, and then it should start to download and then you can save that and then you're gonna open this up. Now, I'm gonna open it up. I don't know what it's going to do. I already have it downloaded, um, but it should open up and look hopefully like what you're seeing on uh, my screen in just a second. Let's see what it does. Um, I hope you can see this, uh, but it says Tableau Public. Um, it says I already have it set up, but you're gonna click install and go through all that um, all that setup stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna exit out of here. But I'm gonna go over here and type in Tableau Public. Uh, and it's 2021.3, that's the current version that they have out. If you're doing this in the future, they may have you know different versions. Um, so you should be able to pull this up right here. Now, um, I'm going to go and get our data set that we're going to be using, and I'm going to show you how to get that as well. And then we will actually jump into Tableau and start uh, using it. So let's go over here. I'm going to get a data set from Kaggle. I wanted something pretty generic uh, to show you. In future videos, I'm going to show you some special, or not special, but just different visualizations that you might use. Um, and we'll get different data sets for those because of course not one data set covers all these other types of visualizations. So um, we're starting off pretty simple right here. We're gonna be getting one called video game sales. Um, and we can take a really quick look at it. Um, here are some of the fields that you're gonna be having, uh, like rank, name, platform, the year, genre, and then some sales data. And this is what it actually looks like. It's called VG sales, so video game sales, it's in a CSV. And um, you know, here are the fields and we have our data. And all we are going to do is we're going to download that and I will save it. Now, when you download it, it's gonna be saved into a zip file. So we need to go to our downloads. Uh, let's refresh this. Here's our archive. We need to go in here. You can just copy it and paste it right back into here. Um, and just so you know, that is a, uh, a, a CSV, so be aware of that. So what we wanna do is we wanna come in here. Now, since it is a CSV, this is not, we're not gonna be using Microsoft Excel. We're gonna be using the text file. So we'll come in here, we'll take VG sales. Now, I, uh, one thing I wanna do before I do that is I'm gonna rename mine uh, VG sales underscore one. Um, I've already prepared for this. And so I already have that in there. Um, but I, so I wanna make a distinct one for myself. You do not have to do that. So we'll come back here um, and then we're gonna do text file and the VG sales. We're going to open that up. And when it pulls up right here, um, you can bring in other tables and then you can start to join them together and create those relationships. We are not going to be doing that in this video. We'll do that in a separate one. Um, as for, you know, just getting started, you know, we're not going to be using that, but you can see um, some of these uh, things or some of these fields. And if you notice, they, they, um, they're either ABC or they're a number. So it starts to categorize what this field type is. So is it a string? Is it numeric? It starts to automatically do that. And that's all done within Tableau. 
And so it just kind of reads it and that's what it does. Um, what we are going to do is we're gonna click right down here. It's called go to worksheet. Um, the worksheets are where you're gonna actually start being able to build your visualizations, your charts, your graphs, all these things. Um, and so, you know, we have this in here now. And so we're just gonna click right here on go to worksheet. As you can see, here is VG sales underscore one. You will not have the underscore one if you did not add that like I did. Uh, but right down here, you can see all the fields that we just imported from that data set. And they even created one right here for us. Uh, they just generated that field uh, based on the file. So it's a count of all the rows, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk you through uh, basically what we're looking at, some of the things that we're going to be using today. There will be things that I don't talk about, but I'm going to highlight those in, set, in, in future videos when we start using those or going over them. Um, and so let's just start with the most obvious one. It's way over here. I'm sure you saw it when we uh, this first came up on the screen because it has all these different charts and visualizations and graphs. And uh, these will become available as you start dragging and dropping our data into this sheet. And so if I go right here, it says four scatter plots, try zero or more dimensions, two to four measures. So what our dimensions are, are right here, and what our measures are, are right down here. And so typically uh, things like, like you say, genre or names or, or strings like that are going to be these uh, dimensions. And then a lot, of, a lot of times the numerical is going to be, are going to be measures. Next, what I want to show you is right here. So you can take something like global sales and you can drag it right here into your rows and then it takes your rows and so it automatically created a sum of global sales now if we take that away and let's say we drag it right here it's going to give us a column now you can also do it right up here you don't have to um, drag it on screen you can also just add it to the column or the row. That's typically what I do. I, it's just more intuitive to me. Um, or you can drop it in this section right here, and it does its best to assign it some type of um, some type of visualization. And so that's what it always is trying to do. It is trying to say, oh, okay, this is what you're trying to do. Let me try to get the best visualization for the data that you're giving me. Now, while we are here, um, it went down here into marks, and marks is a very important area. It's where you can add color, size, text, detail, and tooltip, and I'm not going to go into what all those are because I'm just going to show you. So let's start pulling some fields in here and creating a visualization, and then I'm going to show you how all of that works, including filters as well. So the first thing that we are going to look at is global sales, and let's put that in the rows. And then I'm going to take year and I'm going to make that the column. And this is basically exactly what uh, I wanted to do. Now, as of right now, it has only the year and it's looking at global sales for everything. But we want to break that out a little bit better. I want to break it out by, let's do genre. So different genre of games. Now, if I add that right here to this columns, it is going to break it up by year and genre. If I add it right here, it is going to break it out by the year, of course, but then in each individual row has the different genre. That's not what we want. We want to keep this type of line graph. Uh, and what all we're going to do is we're going to add it to marks. And you can't really see it based off of these colors, but they're all different. So we have action genre. We have the sports genre, racing, uh, role playing, all these different genres within it. Now we can get rid of that because we don't need it anymore. Uh, and this is where these um, these marks really come in handy because you can start basically doing what you want with them. So for the genre, I want to be able to see all these different genres with different colors. To me, that just makes the most sense. So I'm going to put color right here and automatically it assigns every single genre its own color and gives us this legend right over here. And so it's really easy to see. Well, when you have smaller numbers, it's much easier. But I know that red is sports, and I can go right here and find red, and that is sports. So it makes it a lot easier than when it is all the same color blue. So what you can do after that is you can also add things like uh, a label to it. So if we take 
label and we or we take genre we put label you can click right here and you can get rid of the labels that you have and you can see them right down here or you can also change uh, the font so if you want to make it orange or, or whatever color you can do all those same things and you can also do things like changing where you see these things so for action you're going to see it a ton because for each year action is is at the is on the higher end and so you're seeing those in those mins and maxes you can also do it for a selected area so if i come in here and i select it it's then going to show me what those are so label is really really uh, useful really helpful let me get rid of that really quick uh, you can also do it where the lines end so line ends is at the beginning and the end and you can also take that away or put that back on so labels are really important. Labels aren't very helpful when you're doing, at least I don't find that it's super helpful when you're doing things like genre. So when you're doing your dimensions. So I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm actually going to bring our global sales over here. And let's label that. And right now I think it's labeling the uh, line ends. We wanna do the min and max. Now, if we do min and max on the table, it's just gonna give us the max and the min, which is zero and then 139.4. It's a little bit more useful if we do it for each line. Uh, this at least gives us some context. I probably wouldn't do this in an actual visual visualization, but to give you some um, understanding of how, just how it works. So now I know that um, right over here, the min and the max, or the min, uh, sorry, the max for these for action and for sports, uh, is right around 138, 139. So it's pretty easy to see. Um, and you can, again, go in here and you can remove the max or remove the mins, whichever one you feel is best. Uh, you'll probably keep the maximums in there for each category. And so this is a really quickly becoming uh, a pretty usable visualization. And that's not the only label that you can add. We still are using year over here, so we can always drop year in there as well create a label. And so now we have, let's see for this one is a puzzle genre. So we also have the year that it had the maximum uh, sales. And so, you know, just some things that you can do, you don't have to add that. Now let's go up here and we're going to take a look at filters because filters are really important. You know, if you are making this for a client or you're making this for somebody, you want them to be able to filter down uh, to very specific information that they want to see. So let's take uh, the platform. Lots of different platforms. Um, as you can see, you know, PS4, Xbox, um, if you're familiar with these, we'll click all of these um, and we'll click OK. So now this is an option as a filter. And all we're going to do is we're going to click on this arrow right here and we're going to say show filter. Now, Right now, all of them are selected. So every single one is being taken into account for this visualization. But let's say we come down here and we say, okay, I don't want to see sales for any of these PS, the original PlayStation 2, 3, or 4. So I'm going to get rid of this one, this one, this one, and this one. And you could immediately see the, the changes that were happening. So now none of the numbers, none of those sales are being accounted for and, and being added to the sum of global sales right here at all. So uh, that is just how a filter uh, can work. And you can also do that and you can get rid of all of them and you can go in and actually just pick very specific sales. So if you only want to see the PlayStation sales, you can go in there and do that as well. So really, really handy filters are things that you you'll at least want to have as an option for most of your, your visualizations. At least that's what I found, especially when you're doing client facing work. They like to uh, get in there and mess around and look at different look at it in different ways. And so that's one that I I think is is really useful to to have. The very last thing that we want to do is we want to actually add this to a dashboard now. Let's say we add, come right down here and we add a new worksheet and actually we might change one more thing on that last one, but we'll just make a really simple one. Um, we'll just give it genre and we'll give it global sales as the rows. Um, and this nifty button right up here, which is a sorting button. So I'm going to sort like that. I'm going to add the genre in just as we did. I'll give it different colors. Perfect. 
Now we have two really quick different visualizations, right? What I want to do is just show you how to combine those because what you are going to do is you're going to actually come in here and you're going to do new dashboard. That's what this button is right here. Now, when we come in here, the size is extremely small. Uh, it's very easy to fix that. All we're going to do is click right here. We're going to go to this range or this drop down and we're going to click automatic. So now it is a much larger size for us to actually drop our visualizations into. Uh, and let's put sheet one and we'll put, uh, let's put it up top. So now it looks a little bit like this. Uh, not perfect, but again, if I wanted to make this look a lot better, I definitely would. And then you can go over here and you can rename these things. You can also do that back when we were in our actual uh, worksheets, but you can also do it here as well and then start um, you know, customizing and building it out. That's not what this video is for. That is the last video we're gonna build entire dashboard it'll be kind of like a small project you can put that in your portfolio um, if you have gotten this far and you want to jump straight into it and you don't want to wait for these other videos to come out or you don't you just want to jump straight into creating an entire portfolio project i have an entire portfolio project series that covers sql python and tableau and so go check out that series i have one video dedicated to tableau it's like 45 minutes or an hour long and it covers a lot of the things that we're going to hear in here as well as a few other things. But I appreciate you checking out this video. In future videos, we're going to be going over things like creating bins, calculated fields, doing joins, and then creating a final project and putting it all together. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below, and I will see you in the next video. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Tableau tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna be going over bins and calculated fields. All right, so let's jump right into it. The first thing that we're gonna look at are bins. And bins are basically just groupings or ranges of numerical values. So we cannot create bins uh, for genre, name, platform, or anything like that. We have to do something uh, with this sign right here, which means that it is a numeric. So year or all of this sales data or this ranking data. And we're gonna use what we worked on in our very first tutorial. And so what we're gonna be using to kind of demonstrate how bins work is this year right down here. So right now we have a range of 1993 all the way up to 2018. And we're gonna create some bins to group and create ranges for these years. And it's pretty simple. All we're gonna do is we're gonna come right over here to year and this little drop down on the side and we're gonna go down to create and go down to bins. Now it's going to say the size of bin and it's gonna give you a recommendation based off of the information that is already provided, the min and the max, uh, the ranges of these values. You know, you don't have to do this, but usually um, it, it does give some good uh, estimation on what you might be considering. If you were thinking, hey, maybe do a, a bit of like 20 and they're recommending two, think about why they might be doing that. Uh, we're gonna change ours to five and you can always change what this field is going to be. I'm just gonna give it an old exclamation point just to um, really spice things up here. So we're gonna click okay. And as you can see, it adds it right up here it is no longer, um, it is no longer a numeric, now it is a categorical. So it, now it's this is no longer just uh, one, two, three, four, five, it's ranges, it's groups. And we're gonna get rid of this year really quick. Actually, let's keep it up there for a second, uh, see what happens. But we're gonna bring this up and we'll get rid of this year. And this is, is what kind of it spits out for us. Now, I did look at the data um, when I was prepping for this. There are some nulls in the years um, and so all we're gonna do for this is we're just gonna go like this and we're going to exclude the nulls. Uh, probably not something you should be doing uh, if you're doing this for work, but this is for demonstration purposes. So we can do whatever we want. But as you can see, we now have these ranges. So this range starts at 1990 and it includes 1990 all the way up to 1994. And then it's 1995 to 1999. And so just really quickly, we can tell that the years 2000 to 2004 were a huge, huge, huge 
uh, season or group of, of years for game sales. So these are the global sales for, for these video games. And so it is really helpful. It's very useful. Um, you can do this on a lot of different information. We could do this on the sales data. You can do this on age. You can do it on years like we did. And it can be very, very useful. And so uh, really quickly, that is how bins work. Uh, I would say it's pretty straightforward. Now, this is a perfect time to segue into the next part of the video, which is calculated fields. Uh, right over here on this left-hand side, we see that the global sales, which are in millions, goes all the way up to 900 million and created these beautiful bins right down here. But let's look at within these from 1999 to 2015, let's see which of these has the highest percentage. Of course, it's going to be this one, but we can do something called a quick table calculation. Uh, we'll create a, our own calculation later and I'll show you how to do that. But we're going to do a quick table calculation and we're going to do the percent of total. And so now we have these bins and instead of just seeing the total amount of sales that they had, we see the actual percentages based off these year ranges, which is really useful, something that you could absolutely put uh, in some real work that you do for a client. Now really quick, just to show you something that you can do if you click control and you drag this over here, you can actually save that calculation. So we can say percentage of global sales. And that actually saves it as uh, you know a measure for us. So that was a quick calculation, but let's look how to actually create a calculated field. So if we do this right here, what is going to come up is just the global sales. And you can do a lot of what you would basically do in Excel, multiplication, division, subtraction, a few other things, but we're gonna keep it super, super simple today. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take global sales and I'm going to subtract, I'm gonna do an open bracket and I'm gonna say EU sales and it auto completes for me. I'm gonna click okay and it created calculation two. I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna say global sales minus EU sales. And let's drag this over. These are different. Um, one's percentage, one is in terms of sum. And so I'm just gonna bring this in right here. And so now we are comparing against the same thing. And if we look at the global sales, we have probably right around 950 million-ish in this 2000 uh, to 2004 bin. And for global sales minus the EU sales, we're looking at you know 650 million. So there is a noticeable difference. And this is just one of the ways that you can use uh, calculated fields to actually just show the difference between two numbers, or you can do more advanced calculations depending on the data that you actually have. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a little bit more about bins and calculated fields. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at a ton of different visualizations and graphs and charts, and just exploring what options are really are out there for visualizing our data. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below, and I will see you in the next video. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Tableau tutorial series. In this video, we're gonna be looking at lots of different visualizations, including the scatter plot and density maps. Now, before we jump into the tutorial, I have some very exciting news. In just two days on October 7th, I'm gonna be partnering with Alterx to host a webinar. This webinar is completely for data analysts who are wanting to change careers to become a data analyst. Now you did hear that right, I will be the host of the event, but we will be bringing on guests as well who are industry experts who actually change careers to become data analysts, much like myself. They'll be sharing their stories of how they actually transition careers along with the tools that they found extremely useful and helpful to make that switch. And they'll be giving lots of advice along the way. So if you are somebody who is wanting to change careers to become a data analyst or just wanting to learn about data analytics, this is an absolute fantastic place to learn a lot more about that. I will leave a link in the description, so be sure to go and sign up for that. Again, I'm going to be there, so it should be really fun. Without further ado, let's jump onto my screen and start the tutorial. Now, we are about to look at a ton of different visualizations. Uh, over here, you can see just an array of them. But not all of them are ones that I actually think are useful or ones that I would actually recommend using. 
And so I'm gonna take you through some of the ones that I absolutely think are worth learning and using and trying out. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of just show you how I might use them, how they might look, how I can navigate them a little bit. Now, before we do that, we do need to go download one data set. It's this Starbucks location worldwide. Yes, we're gonna do a little bit of longitude latitude here. And all we have to do is click this downloads button and it will download. We're gonna do that into downloads. We'll save that. Uh, yeah, I've already done that, but you know, I'm doing this with you guys and doing it for you. So let's go to our downloads. Now we have here, we wanna come in here. We're gonna copy it or um, you can cut it. Uh, and then we're gonna paste it here. Yeah, replace it, perfect. And now we have it ready to go. We'll come in here, let's do a new sheet. And I already have it in there, but uh, I'm just gonna show you what I would do. I'd do new data source. Uh, we'll do text file, we'll do directory, and we will open it. And let's see what data we have in here before we actually begin, uh, just super quickly. We have the brand, so um, whatever company has it, and then a bunch of um, location information. Street address, city, uh, the state. This is all in the United States. So that's basically it. And what we are going to do is we're gonna go over to this sheet three, and we have this directory two. That's the one I just pulled in. Uh, exact same thing as directory, but... So the first visualization that we are going to look at is a bar and line graph. So what we're gonna take is the year right here. We're gonna take these global sales and these NA sales. And we're gonna be doing this one right here. So this has a combination of two separate uh, types of visualizations. So sometimes you just have a line, sometimes you just have these, uh, these bar graphs or these bar charts, uh, and we're combining the two. And it's very nice, I like how this looks. Now, if you notice, if I put this NA sales behind it, now it kind of cuts off. So now this global sales is in front. We're gonna you know, put that back. I just wanted to show you that. Uh, right here, there's all, some of global sales, some of NA sales. So if we go into this all, we click this drop down. we can change it to a line. Um, we can change it basically whatever we want. I just hit Control Z to reverse that. But what we can do is we can go in here and we can change this color. And let's see if we can just make it red. Is that possible? Let's see what I did? I made it orange. That works for me. Um, just something to stick out a little bit more. Choose whatever color you want. And this is a really nice visualization. This is one that I have used in the past. We're looking at global sales versus the NA sales. And so it's very easy to see the distinction between the two and how one was doing a specific year versus how the other one was doing in that same year. So I really like this. If you want to do something uh, like keeping it consistent, you can do two bars. I don't really like this one as much. Um, and you can, again, you can really change it up. Um, there's lots of different ones that you can do. Again, I prefer the line, but you know, do whatever you think is best. I'm gonna change it back because this is not how I wanna keep it. But there you go. So that is the first one that we are going to look at. Let's move on to the second one. And we actually will be using our, our Starbucks data here. Now, when you bring in data that has um, any type of map or, or um, address or postal code or things like that or, or country, it's typically going to create this latitude and longitude. It's gonna generate that. Now, what we wanna do is bring this longitude right up here and this latitude right there. And if you do the show me right now, it's giving us this, but what we want to do is add what we're looking for. So what will we actually be trying to search for on this map? You can do anything from like a postal code um, and it will drag us right here. Let's come over to this. This allows us to kind of scroll around a little bit. Um, we're gonna mess around with this one for just a little bit. And let me see if I can. That's nice. That might be too big. Let me back up one. So at least in the continental US, a little bit down here, this, these are the postal codes. So right now we're looking at postcodes. Uh, and there are a lot that you can do with this, um, really. Color will make almost no difference. It just becomes this mess. So you don't typically wanna do something like that. 
uh, at least not for this. Let's go to size. And if we make it really small, you can kind of see these groupings, these pairings, um, typically of like larger cities or major major metropolitan areas. And so you can do this and it's, and it's really, really easy. I don't recommend uh, labeling this. I don't even know if it'll do it. Um, it would be an absolute mess to try to label all these postcodes. But let's bring this out and let's bring these state and provinces in. Now, right now we have these little tiny, tiny uh, dots on here. And I think what we want to do is not increase the size, but over here, we want to actually do this and make it a map. So now it's going to fill in all the states. Uh, we can, you know, why not? We'll add some color here. Um, but we can, what has it numbered? I didn't think they were numbered. Um, oh, that's interesting. I haven't seen that. I didn't look at that before. I was just uh, found that interesting. But now we can see what... Uh, what states Starbucks is in. And as you can see, they're in all 50 states. But it's something interesting to um, look at, to think about. Now, if we go right up here, we can again choose a different type. And we're going to go to the density. Now, right now, it's just doing a density on the, uh, the state. Um, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to bring back postal code. I'm just switching it up on you a little bit. And you can do it as small or as big as you'd like. Um, you know, I like to do somewhere in the middle um, probably right, maybe right about there is fine. Um, I don't think it's going to make sense to really add any color here. Again, all these postal codes are different, so it's just going to be complete mishmash. But uh, this is kind of how you can use a density map, and you can do this uh, with uh, countries. You can do this with postal codes. You can do this with any type of kind of like address or location-based data. So that is how you can use a map. Again, there's lots of different ways to use a map. And so I'm not going to show you every single way, but in a really brief way, this is how you can use a map to actually visualize your data that does have location uh, based information in it. So let's go over to sheet three. Uh, and this data that we have over here, it just allows for a lot of different types of visualizations. So we're going to use this one. Um, and there are lots of other ones that you might see out there like this one right here. Uh, we obviously wouldn't be using this. We might do something like this change the label um and maybe add why are both of these in here um let's get rid of this oops that's not what i meant let's actually add that let's do the sum of global sales and we'll just make that into a label as well so what you can do with these and and how you're able to use them and visualize them Again, these are not, you'll see these often, but these are not often ones that I would recommend you use. That's very similar to these packed bubbles. Um, you can add these global sales in here again, add the label. It just, uh, it sometimes is not as straightforward the information that it's trying to tell you, right? You kind of have to search for it a little bit. You kind of have to look around, um, but you can find some good visualizations in here for very specific types of data. And so these are just ones to consider. Uh, one that you'll see all the time is uh, this guy right here. And uh, let me see if I can expand this a little bit because this is very small. Um, let's see, we have the size, I just want global sales. And let's label that. The size. How do, I, how do I expand this? I haven't done this in a while. Let me just expand this. I don't use pie charts. Up. What is happening? This is a incredibly large pie chart. Oh my gosh! I am making this. Uh, this is becoming a problem. There we go. Uh, and what I actually wanted to do was label the uh, genre as well, as I've been doing in all the other ones. Uh, and we'll label this. Now, look, whether you are a fan of pie charts or not, you have to understand that people use them. Uh, some people just like how they look. And for certain data, it can do well. For things that have a lot of different um, groupings or categories, it usually isn't super great, uh, but it does give you some type of order of things, give you a quick glance, and people use them, right? So let's not pretend like 
it's like the, the, the hideous stepchild, all right? People use it. People have it in their dashboards and their visualizations all over. So it's best to just know what they look like, know how to do them, know um, how to use them best. Again, I'm not a super huge, huge fan of it myself. I've used it once or twice, but one to look out for. And again, you can come over to here and use, it is called a box and whisker plot. Um, it's good for these large um, distributions. Uh, you know, this is like the median, upper, upper, lower, lower. I don't use these a lot, but I know a lot of people who love them. Something to just look at and consider, mess around with it a little bit. It's pretty, I think, straightforward. And it does give you some good insight into your data if you know how to use it. Now there is one last one that I want to show you. I'm just gonna create it on a new sheet, make it easy. Uh, we'll do year here, we'll do sum of, let's do NA sales, why not? And we are gonna make this like this. Now it's very similar to a line chart, but when we break it out by the genre and we add some color, you know, it's just a different way to visualize this information. You can, uh, you know, potentially add some stuff in here, like some labels if you uh, want to, depending on how it looks for you. But this is just another way to visualize the data. So wanting to give you guys some options, wanting to give you some things that you might want to look at if you haven't already used these before, these are ones, all, every single one that I've showed you are ones that I've at least used once. Um, this one I maybe have literally only used once. But the first ones that I showed you, the ones I pointed out as the ones that I really wanted you to know are great visualizations to learn how to use and learn how to make useful for the data that you have. With that being said, that is all that we are looking at in this video. Again. I've tried to keep it super easy, just wanted to show you some different visualizations, the data that you can use to get those visualizations, and just some other options in case you wanted to get a little bit uh, spontaneous, a little bit out there, a little bit funky uh, to show your boss or something like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below, and I will see you in the next video. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at joins in Tableau. Now before we get into the tutorial, I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor and that is Udemy. They are having a massive Black Friday sale and so everything is about 85% off. So if you've been looking at a course, now is the time to buy it. If you are looking at learning and taking an actual full Tableau course, there are fantastic ones on Udemy that I have taken myself. So be sure to go and check out Udemy while they're having this huge sale. I will include a link in the description if you wanna check them out. Now, let's get into the tutorial. All right, let's get started. And first we're gonna start off in Excel. I'm gonna kind of walk you through the data that we're working with. And then we're going to put it into Tableau and I'm gonna show you how to do all those joins in Tableau. So the first table that we have is this demographics table. We have employee ID, name of employee, employee age, and employee gender. Now look right here because this will be important uh, going forward in the demographics table. We have 10 uh, individuals and they each have an employee ID. Now when we go to the job title, we have our employee ID, employee name, and the job title, but this one is missing, uh, Ryan Howard is missing his employee ID. And then the very last one, there are only seven employee IDs and no names. Um, and so we're gonna use all of that and I'm gonna show you how to actually do the joins in Tableau. Tableau does a really fantastic job of visualizing it for you, so it takes a lot of the guesswork out. Um, I am gonna include a link to my joins video in SQL because these two are very closely connected and, and if you understand how the joins work in, in SQL, you'll understand how the joins work in Tableau. It's l almost the exact same thing. So with that being said, let's jump over to Tableau. So I'm gonna pull this up, I'm gonna go right over here. And now we have uh, where we can connect to our data. And so we're gonna click Microsoft Excel. I'm gonna scroll down here to Tableau joins file. I'm gonna open this up and I have it open so I can't use it. So let me get rid of that and let's open it again. Perfect. 
So now what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to actually open up the joins um, in a second. But what you need to understand is when you first come here, Tableau doesn't automatically allow you to, to use the joins. They use something called relationships. And there are joins on the back end, but they call it relationships because they are inferring all of these things. They're trying to go in and make that inference for you. So it takes a lot of the work off of you. And most of the time that works. And, and you know, you just plug these two things in here, like a demographics and the job title. And it is going to, you know, help you build those what they call relationships. And you can click on this and learn how the relationships differ from joins. Again, there's not a huge difference, but it's not as customizable and you can't as easily do left joins or full joins or all these things that we're about to look at. So uh, I'm going to take this one off. And what we're going to do to actually be able to look at the joins and, and choose what joins we want to use is we're going to do this drop down. We're going to click open. And so now we are in a place where we can actually create the joins. Uh, and again, it's just much more customizable. And so um, back when I was using Tableau regularly, I would use the relationships when it was pretty simple and straightforward because almost they almost always got it right. But, uh, you know, the joins, it, it just makes more sense in the way it visualizes it for me. So most of the time I'd be using the joins. So let's pull over this job title right here. And it's going to make this connection. Now, before, if you remember just about, you know, 30 seconds ago when it connected them, it was just a line. And, and so it gave us this option down here to kind of edit the relationship. But now it's giving us this visualization. And so let's click on it really quick. And what is going to come up is the different types of joins that you can do. You can do an inner join, a left join, a right join, and a full outer join. And then you can actually choose the different uh, data sources and how you're connecting them. So again, um, I'm going to walk through a little bit of this, but I think the SQL video that I did on this shows it so well. Um, I would just highly recommend using that. Um, and I recommend learning SQL too. So, you know, two birds, one stone. So I'm going to get into each of the joins, how they work, what data is going to be displayed. Um, and these visualizations are really going to be helpful. And I think that it's it's just nice that they have it because it's a little reminder, okay, um, you know, this is what this join is or this is what that join is. So super, super simple. So right now we have the demographics table and we have the job title table. And so what it's doing right now, and let's get rid of this. What it's doing right now is it's doing an inner join. And so it's pulling everything that overlaps if it matches on the employee ID and the employee ID. And so right now you only see one through nine. But if you remember in the demographics table, we had uh, 1000 all the way through 10. So where is that 10th one? Well, the 10th one is not there. And that is because in this job title employee ID, it only went up to 1009. And then Ryan Howard just didn't have an employee ID in there for whatever reason. So that data is going to be missing. Now, when you are using actual data sets, very large data sets, which we will use in the next video when we walk through an entire project, um, when you use large data sets, this can be th the difference between clean data and very wrong data and, and visualizing it correctly and showing completely wrong numbers. And so you really need to be sure you understand how your data works together when you're doing these joins. So how can we fix this? How can we... Um, make it to where we can see all of the data. Well, right now we're only making it to where if the employee ID is equal to the employee ID. So we only are going to see through 1009 and through 1009. We're never going to see Ryan. So there are two different types of joins that we could do to make it see it. And then there's something else that we can join on to where we can see that data. The first one that we can look at is the right uh, join. And what this does is it's going to take everything that is the same but also everything from this job title table, regardless of if it has a match in the demographics table. So it's pretty, you know, this visualization does it all. It's going to show everything in the right table regardless. And it's only going to show things from this table if there's a match. So let's try this one. And we should see Ryan Howard in the job title table. So let's click on it. And if we scroll down, there's going to be null, 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 null until we get to over here where we now have the data that we had in that actual table. But again, this wasn't a match. And so we weren't able to see that data. 
So this gives us a way to where we can see all of it, um, all everything from that right table, this job title table. And now we're going to click on the full outer. Now, the full outer is going to take everything from both, regardless of if there is a match at all. And so right here, you're going to see Ryan Howard and Ryan Howard. Now, why are there two different rows for it? Well, because in the demographics table, there was an employee ID. So we're seeing the employee ID, Ryan Howard, his age and his gender. And over here, there was no match, right? But in the job title table, again, this one didn't have an employee ID. And so we, we are going to be able to see this data. But over here, it has no match. And so that's why it's showing us two different rows. It's because there was no connection. There was no match there. That's what a full outer join is going to do. Now, just for uh, the purposes of seeing what this one does as well, we have the left hand table. Um, and now we are able to see the 110 or, or 1010 that we didn't see before. Um, and it's putting in nulls over here because there's no match. So that's that is um, what we have so far. Now, like I said just a second ago, there is a way that we can do this without using the employee IDs. We're allowed to use a different join clause. Now, there is the name of the employee in both of them. This one is called name of employee. And in the job title, it's called employee name. They don't have to have the same column name in order to join it. You can do whatever you want. So I'm going to get rid of this one. And now we are only tying it on the employee name. And let's do an inner join. And it should be basically everything um, except the only piece of data that wasn't filled in, which is that 1010 over on the job title table. And so this way was a slightly different, maybe uh, less thought of way, because normally you do it if there's an ID, you go on the IDs. But because we uh, had a lack of data for in, in one of the tables in the job title table, we decided to use a different column to, to join on. And now we're able to look at all the data together. So super quickly, that is an inner join, a left join, a right join, and a full outer join. And it's pretty easily visualized here. And you're able to uh, change what you're joining on right here, but you're also, you can do multiple. So if we want to do the employee ID and the employee ID, you can do that as well. And you can keep going as, as many as you'd like. Um, and right here, you can change some of these things. Uh, I don't, there aren't a lot of use cases for this, um, but you know, you can absolutely do this um, and mess around with this as seen. I'm not going to go through it in the tutorial because again, 95 plus percent of the joins you're doing, you're going to want to do it to where this equals this. Um, and if you want to get into where it doesn't equal or, or all these other things, which is more complicated, I think it's much better to learn that in SQL. Uh, that's my personal preference. And so um, again, all in the SQL tutorial if you want to check that one out. So you're able to join on multiple things. Now, let's get rid of that one because we can actually bring in this salary one as well. And what you'll see right down here is that we have our employee ID, and this is all coming from the demographics. So employee ID, name of employer, employee age, employee gender. Then right over here, we have the job title table. So employee ID job title, employee name, job title. And then right over here was or is our salary table. And so we have employee ID salary and employee salary. So again, this is a way that you can put all of this data into one place. And in just a second, we'll go into the worksheet right down here. I'm going to show you kind of how it looks because it looks a little bit different um, than previous tutorials. And so I want to show you how that actually all works together. Um, but again, you can create these joins um, as well and do the exact same thing that we just looked at and customize the joins, customize what you're what you're um, uh, joining on, and then you have your finished product. And so right now we have our demographics plus Tableau joins file, and we can rename that if we want. I'm going to call this um, demographics plus joins demo and click enter. And so now that is saved. So now let's go down to the go to worksheet. We're going to click on that. And so up here on our left side, this may look a little bit different than it normally does. 
um, because it's broken out um, on the measure names and the measure values, it's broken out by the tables that they were joined on. So we can pull in the employee gender now, and we can pull in the employee name now, um, and we can pull in the employee ID again if we want to from the job title table, and we can pull in the employee ID from the salary table. We could do that if we wanted to. It makes no sense uh, uh, for actually creating any visualizations, but you know you can do that. And so you probably you wouldn't be able to do that if you hadn't joined these together. And so down here in the measure values, the values that we have are from the demographics table and the salary table. All of the um, all of the stuff from the employee title, none of those things were um, values. And so we can't use, there are gonna be no values down here. And so really quick, let's take the name of the employee. Let's take their salary, sure, why not? Um, let's order that. Let's take the employee salary. We'll do color and uh, let's expand this out a little bit. Maybe one more time, oops, just like that. And there you go. So that is how you do joins in Tableau. And I think Tableau does a really fantastic job of making it pretty simple. They have the different types of joins when you click on that, that join button and it shows you the inner and the left and the right and the full outer. And they make it pretty simple. Um, and, and, and it's just really useful to be able to see that while you're creating it and see the output below like we just did a second ago. It just makes it so simple to create those joins and then just keep going because you already know what your output is going to be and you can kind of mess around with it and make sure you're getting the data that you need. In the very next video, we're going to be doing an entire project in Tableau. We're going to be using a lot more data and it's going to be a, a complete project that you can add to your portfolio and it's going to be a really good time. So I hope that you join me for that one. I appreciate your time. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I'll see you in the next video. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Tableau tutorial series. This is our very last video in the series and today we'll be doing an entire project. Now, if you're watching this video, I hope that you watch the other four videos in this series just so you can get the basics down. You kind of know what you're doing. Uh, this won't be a crazy hard project. This is a beginner tutorial series, so I'm trying to make this super easy so you can follow along. Nothing super complicated, I promise. And if you were wanting to go above and beyond and just make a lot of different dashboards or try a lot of different things, there's a ton of data in here. And so I'll show you some of the things that I would do, you know, as we go through it, of the things that I would be looking at and some of the different visualizations that I might do as well. But again, in this video, we're going to be sticking to a lot of the basics, but I'll switch over my screen in just a second. I will show you the final product and then we will actually walk through step by step of how to do the entire dashboard. And at the end, you should have a completed project that you can add to your portfolio or, you know, just share on LinkedIn if you want to do that as well. With that being said, let's jump over my screen and let's get started. All right, so let's get me off screen and show you what we're going to be working on today. This is the final dashboard that we're actually going to be building. And so it's nothing crazy, right? I'm sure you have seen all of these things before. Um, and I'm just going to help you kind of build it out, show you what to do, the buttons to click. Um, and it's really going to be a simple walkthrough. By the end of this, you should be able to do all these things very easily. And I highly encourage looking at the data and looking at these visualizations and seeing what else you can do with it. There's a lot of different colors, a lot of different visualizations um, that you can do with this data. I am just showing you this today. And so the more you go out there and the more you do this on your own and you mess around with stuff and, and choose different things and see how it all works, the better you're going to get. And so I highly, highly encourage doing that. Uh, so what we are going to be working with today is an Airbnb data set. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. And then I'm gonna show you the data and we're gonna just jump right into it. All right, so this is the data set that we are going to be using. This is the Seattle Airbnb open data set. And let's go down really quick. Um, there's three different CSVs in here. And so this is some of the data that we're going to be working with, um, some date on listings and some pricing. And then there's the actual listing that shows um, the actual street address, the location, the price, the bedrooms, all of these good stuff. And then there's a reviews. Um, and it has, you know, some comments and, you know, talks about some of the reviews. 
So this is what we're going to be working with, but you don't have to go in here and download it. I have already combined all of these CSVs into one. I've put it on the GitHub, so I'll have a link below. So you can just click on that and you don't have to do all the stuff that I did to get this set up. Um, just so you know, this is from 2016. So this data set is a little bit old. If you want to, you can come right here and I will leave this link as well. And you can get the data set from, you know, what is this, a couple weeks ago? Uh, this is they they are continuing to update this. This is always updated, and so you can go ahead and download these. But some of these are these CSV.gz, um, so you may need to like convert it. I don't want to go through that process um, on you know in the video, and so I am just going to go with what is literally in Kaggle um, and use that. But if you want to have an updated one for your project, I just advise you to go in here and grab it yourself, and that should be perfectly good. So. Go ahead and download the data set from the GitHub and we should be good to go. So this is the Excel that I was just talking about. This has all of our CSVs in one place. This is, you know, an Excel workbook. So in this reviews, actually, let's start with the listings because that's kind of where it all stems from. Uh, we have our listing and the date or the data in here is, um, you know, really extensive. There's a lot of data in here. So let's get over really quick. Um, the listing refers to the actual home that they're renting out, the Airbnb. So it shows their location. Um, and there's a lot more location information over here. I'm getting into it in, in just a second. So there's the neighborhood, the city, state, um, zip code, all stuff that, you know, may be useful. There's the latitude and longitude. It shows what type of property it is. So that's really good. Um, right over here, it has... You know, how many bathrooms, bedrooms, and beds. Um, you know, sometimes if it's a five-bedroom house, it has seven beds. So that's why there's those two different um, fields. I don't know if you're familiar with Airbnb and, and you know, what they have on there, but just something to note. Uh, they have the price. This is the price per day. There's a weekly price, a monthly price, and, and if there's a deposit needed. Uh, and then a cleaning fee as well. So a bunch of financial data that's, you know, super useful. We go into it a little bit, but there's so much you can do with that, um, you know, if you want to dig into that. And that's kind of it. The rest of it's pretty, uh, pretty useless. Um, and there's a lot. Of, so there's so much data in here. Almost, you know, more than half by far is nothing you would put in any type of visualization. Um, and this is pretty common. Uh, you're, you're not going to get <laughs> data every column where you're going to be able to use it. A lot of times it's just a lot of useless junk. And so you have to know what you're looking for and know, uh, you know, what's actually useful. So that's the listing. And then we have reviews. Now, what's really can, a little bit confusing in here and something that you just need to kind of understand about the data um, and something that if you're if you get a data analyst job, you need to understand your data because it's very easy to come in here and say, OK, there's an ID, ID field and here's an ID field. So that means that those are the same. Well, not in this case. Um, this ID field is actually the review reviews ID, not the reviewer ID that refers to like the person. This is the reviews ID. This listing ID is the actual ID right there. So really important to note. Um, and then the lot. And so then they just have their comment there, what they left as a review. And then on the calendar, um, I don't know why I'm scrolled down. Uh, we have this listing ID again. So again, that listing ID is equal to the ID in this listing table. And we have a date and a price. So this refers to a specific location. And on this day, they got $85 for it. Somebody rented it out. Um, and so then there's these like T's and F's. Um, let's try to find a blank one really quick. Here's a blank one. So there's these T's and F's. Uh, the T means that it was taken. Um, the F means that it's vacant. Uh, I don't know exactly what it means, uh, what the T and F means, but that we can deduce that much from this. And so you can see when and how much this person was making or this home made uh, in that time. So really, really good data in here. There's a lot to work with. Um, and, and so we're just going to be kind of, I'll give you a, a little bit of a use case for it in a second. And then we're going to start trying to answer some of those, the building out some of the visualizations for that use case. Uh, again, you could have 20 different use cases for this data or more, um, honestly, for this data where you could build out different dashboards and different reports, literally with just this data. But, you know, we're doing a pretty general, broad project. And so it's hard to, 
answer all of them. So let's jump over to Tableau. We're going to get started on this and we are going to build out everything. All right, so let's come right here. Uh, this is a Microsoft Excel. We'll open that up. Do this one. We will open it and give it just a second. It says it's executing the query, it's pulling the data in. All right, so we have our calendar, our listing, and our reviews. Those are different tabs at the bottom. We're going to start with the listing. This is the, the kind of the main one, has, um, you know, the, there's, I didn't show you, but there's about 3,600 locations that they had in there. Uh, let's just have it update automatically. I don't know why we need to click on that. But um, so we have this listings. <clears throat> we have our uh, calendar and our reviews. What we're going to do is going to come in here and we're going to open it as we did in our very last video uh, for the joins. So now that we've opened it, we can kind of go in here and we can do the joins as um, as needed. And so let's go over here and we're going to uh, let's start with calendar. I'm going to put it right there. That was super slow. I apologize. <clears throat> All right, let's wait for it to get the data. Start setting everything up. Did not think it would take this long. I apologize. No, take your time. So let's click on here. And right now it has the uh, the join based on the price, which obviously is not going to work. Um, and if you remember, there is no ID in this calendar. It's just the listing ID. Um, we can actually look right here. There's just the listing ID. So we're actually going to put listing ID is equal to ID. And right down here, we can see that we have a lot of, of well, you can't see it, uh, but we show that there is a lot of data. Um, and so we know that that is correct. We know that that is now pulling in data correctly because it's showing up down here. So that's a good thing. Now, in this listings, there are about 3,600, um, about 3,600 listings. And so that all the data that's in listings is going to be in there. But on the calendar, because we converted from a CSV to an Excel workbook, it isn't able to store as much information. So some of the ones in calendar may have gotten cut off. So we can just keep it this inner join because we know that if it's in listings it is going to be in calendar. We know that it if it um, there may be some in calendar that aren't in listings. So if we really, um, you know, if we really, really wanted to, we could do a full outer or something like that. I, I haven't really thought through this as I'm talking through it in my head, but we know that uh, everything that's in listing is going to be in calendar. Uh, and so, you know, we don't really need to do anything other than an inner join. And we can also pull in these reviews and it's gonna do the same thing as before, where it's just kind of pulling in the data and it defaults to ID equals ID. Now we know that that is not correct um, because the ID in here is referring to the review ID. We need to go to the listings ID. So we need the ID to be able to you know, be part of that listings ID. If we do the ID, it goes down to 2,555 rows. If we do how it's supposed, and because that's just, you know, it's random luck. There happen to be some numbers that are in both fields um, that tie together. If we do the correct one where we hit the listing ID, it bumps it up to I think 2,373,000, oh, maybe more than that, uh, 23 million rows, right? A lot, lot, lot more. And so it's super important to get these joins right to tie them together on the right fields. If you just do it based off what Tableau tells you because it has that automated, um, you know, it goes into these fields and says, okay, these are the same exact column name. So they're most likely going to be what you're looking for. Well, it was incorrect in this point. So it's really important to check those things and make sure you're pulling in the right data. Again, we're going to keep it that inner join. Um, you know, if you wanted to, you know, try to see if there's any other data that correlate We're keeping it simple today, but sometimes you need to join on multiple things. Uh, so just, uh, uh, you know, a tip. So let's get out of here. Um, and we are good to go. So this is our listings plus Tableau full project. That's what we'll, that's what we'll be working with. Um, and we, we were able to tie all three of these um, 
you know, as you call them, tables or sheets or whatever you want to call them, we were able to tie them together. So let's go over here to our first worksheet. Uh, and let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, so this says Tableau Public only works with less than 15 million rows of data. We have 23 million rows of data. That is, uh, that's a problem. Um, and when I did this before, it didn't do that. So I, you know, we're going to work through this together. So this is date reviews. I believe this is date for, um, this is date for the calendar, which is going to be a lot of rows of data. Um, and so I'm sure that's part of it. Let's see. Let's do years. We only want 2016. Oops. We only want 2016. Let's do okay. Let's see what that does. Let's see if that gets us under what we need. Um, we only want 2016 data anyways. So if it's in 2017, we were going to take it out um, anyway. So we'll see if that gets us underneath. I have absolutely no, if this take, ends up taking like 20 minutes, I will just cut it and, you know, you won't have to wait as long as I'm waiting. So we'll see how long it takes. All right, so it took about 20 minutes and it did absolutely nothing. Um, one thing I do know is that we don't actually use this review tables at all. Uh, it was just for demonstration purposes. So we're gonna remove that and let's see if that helps us in any way. Because if it does, we're just gonna keep it as is. Um, you know, the reviews table is really just for demonstrating how to do the joins, uh, but we weren't actually using any of the data for any of the visualizations. Although you could. Again, I want to see how long this takes, uh, and I'll cut ahead. All right, so that worked uh, perfectly. It apparently took out all the data that we needed, or all the rows that we needed to get under that level. Again, I was just doing that to show you the, the that joins, how you needed to change the uh, columns to make sure that it joined properly. We don't actually use it for any of the visualizations, so their end product is going to be totally fine. I don't know why uh, this didn't happen to me when I when I created this whole thing already. Um, so I'm just going to move forward because uh, I make mistakes. So uh, let's keep moving. The first one that we are going to make is that uh, is that colorful one. I'll probably pop it up on screen so you can see it. Uh, well, if I remember, I'm going to pop it up on screen. Um, it's the colorful one. It's the price by zip code. So we're going to be looking at these zip codes and kind of see, um, you know, how expensive is each zip code. Um, and before we actually start, I just rem remembered, I want to talk to you about the use case for this data. I want to imagine you to imagine that you're working for somebody and they're like, Hey, where, you know, I, I want to start an Airbnb business. I want to know where I should go. Where should I buy up, buy a home, put it up on Airbnb and start renting it out. Where's the best place? You know, what are some of the factors that I should be looking at? Uh, and so that's kind of what our use case is. So we're going to, some of the things that he cares about are things like bedrooms, um, location, which is really important, and how much price he's actually going to get, uh, how much money can he charge. And so he's trying to optimize that to make sure that whatever rental he gets, he can make a lot, the most profit from instead of choosing something that, you know, he thinks would work, but, you know, in the end, he's actually not making that much money. So those things are important. So that's our use case. We're trying to help this guy out, help him find a really good Airbnb. Um, so let's take a look at these zip codes real quick. We have uh, quite a few of them. And there's one that's null. Uh, we'll exclude that. Or if, if it doesn't have a zip code, we'll just exclude those because they're not going to show up on the, these visualizations anyways. Um, and so we want to look at the price. So we just want to find uh, the price, which should actually be down here. And not the sum. Uh, no, we want to look at the average price and let's order that. This is great. Um, so this is the most expensive one, uh, zip code 98134 at $206, uh, per, uh, for the average price. Uh, but let's give that some color really quick. Let's, uh, where's the zip code? It's up here. So let's take that zip code. We're going to put it right over here. We're going to do color. And it's going to give it some uh, assorted colors. Now, these colors are going to um, 
when we do the map in just a little bit, these colors will um, match what we're doing in there. And so, you know, I, I like to try to color coordinate things. Um, we're not doing going too crazy with the colors today. So this is our very first visualization. Congratulations. It is uh, it is complete. So uh, we can label this one and we can just do price by zip code and I'll make that uh, bold. I don't know. I usually like it bold. Uh, we'll apply. We'll do like that. And boom. First one is done. Uh, and this is our starting place to say, uh, hey, person who's looking to buy this Airbnb, here are the zip codes where they are able to charge the most um, for, for their Airbnb. So let's go over to the second sheet. And we are going to be doing the map. And so um, map is pretty easy, but it it's pretty easy once you actually get the data that you need. Although there's a lot of different data that you can use for the actual um, map right here. You need something that shows um, the location. And there's a lot of things that show location in here. In fact, they already um, provide a latitude and longitude. And then at the bottom, they generated a latitude and longitude from, from some different um, fields. And then there's just a bunch of different um, state. There's um, states, there's zip codes. There are, uh, I think another one, uh, yeah, like country. There's a lot of location data in here. So which one do we want to use? We want to stay consistent. We don't want to deviate from that and start using different um, longitude and latitudinal uh, coordinates because that could throw off our, our results completely. We want to stay consistent with what we're using. So we actually want to use this zip code. But when we pull it up here, it's going to give us uh, basically the same, um, you know, it's going to show these zip codes, but we are going to right over here, we're going to click on this one. And now it's going to separate them out. So now we have all of these, um, you know, kind of separated out. What you might get when you first do this um, is it might look like this. You may have to zoom in. Um, I know that that happened to me the other time. Excuse me, go to here. That's what happened to me uh, just when I first did it. So uh, know that that may happen. And we want to change the colors the exact same way that we did them before. So we're just going over here. We're doing color. And these colors do... Um, they do or should match up with the, um, with the other ones. Let me, um, exclude this. Let me see if it does nine, eight, one, three, four. That's the blue. And right over here, nine, eight, one, three, four. It's a blue. I, I, I believe they are going to be the same. Yep. And so just scrolling back, if you look at the zip code on the far right, uh, they are the same. So if you look at like this section right over here, I, I just wanting to make sure I'm not going crazy uh, before I get into this and realize I'm not correct at all. So uh, now what we want is, you know, this doesn't really give us any information. If I was just to glance at this map, I would have no idea what you're trying to show me, um, any information off this. So we want to show some actual information. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually add the label to this so that you can see it. You know, when you're going over here and you see, OK, here's this um, zip code um, in the dashboard, when we create it, you can't click on this. But if you just want to do it visually without having to click anywhere, you'll be able to see, OK, 98134. That's right here. So this location right here is, you know, able to charge a lot of money. It's probably a really nice neighborhood. So um, and we can back that up by putting the average price. So these these two visualizations are really they really go hand in hand. Uh, we're going to add oops, not the sum. This one needs to be the average. So you go to this measure, the sum, go to average, and there you go. And these should match. So this should be 206.6. Um, I'm looking at the average price right here. And then we go over here, 98134, 206.6. So this all matches um, and we can uh, we can actually change that size a little bit if you want to actually get it in, um, get it within each of these things, you know, adjust it as you see fit. I think that's fine right there. Um, no need to mess with it anymore. All right. So let me see. I think that is everything for this one. I don't know if I want to add anything else. Uh, no, I'm going to keep it how it is. So. That is our second visualization. Again, these ones are directly 
uh, correlated. And, and you know, this there's just different ways to visualize it. This one you can see actually on the map where it is and the average price. This one you can see from highest to low. So again, you know, sometimes when you're doing these visualizations, you're going to have these accompanying um, uh, these accompanying visualizations in your dashboard. That's very normal. So let's move over to the third one. And for this third one, um, you know, something that our guy was looking at is he's like, okay, well, you know, I'm thinking about listing it on Airbnb, but I also want to live in it. So I want to know the best times to actually, um, you know, put it on the market for people to be able to use. And so I was like, okay, man, no problem. Uh, let's let's take a look at when are, when are people spending the most money in Airbnbs? And we actually have that calendar. Um, if you remember, let's look, let's see, this calendar. So we have this available, the date, the listing, all of that stuff. Um, <clears throat> and let's look at the date in here. Uh, and we obviously don't want it like this. We want it to be more... Uh, more of a time series and we're going to do, be doing that based off of uh, the price for the calendar so let's go see if we can find that really quick okay here's the price where is that calendar one let me see okay there's the calendar oh here all right totally forgot where that was supposed to be oof that looks terrible Okay, um, let's see. Let's let's start working on this because this needs some work. Obviously, uh, this is the worst visualization I have ever seen. <laughs> um, so we need to work on this a little bit. What we need to do is we need to change. Uh, whoops, we need to change some, some the way that these dates are are seen. So right here is uh, these are two separate things. So if I go right here and I do by quarter, it's just going to change the quarters here, right? That's that isn't really helpful. We actually want to keep the year here. What we want to do it is by year, we want to separate it by year, um, but we want to separate it. Let's just do, I don't know, let's try week and see what it looks like. Okay, this is great. This is this is what we're looking at. Again, um, if, if we went back and changed this like quarter, it uh, changed it quarter and then changed it to week, it would show the quarters, but it wouldn't show everything right this isn't all the data that we need and so you know you really need to make sure that you're doing this correct i it's on by default it's almost always year but if you're looking at it via quarter so like let's say somebody comes in you say hey what quarters i want to break these out by quarters um and not year over year that's how you would do this but in the year we want to break it out by uh the week and you see this huge drop off um, at the end. Well, that is actually because the data doesn't go past that. Um, there's just like one day of data <laughs> or one one um, week of data in here with actual um, with January of 2017 data. So it just drops off because this is an this is a sum. So it only adds up to like um, 591,000 compared to like the 2 million. So we want to get rid of that. Um, and how do we do that? Uh, let's see. I think it's filter. Ba, 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 bum. How's it format? No, it's not format. What am I thinking? Bear with me. Uh, let's see. A filter. Well, I was looking for it. I just couldn't find it. Uh, let's bring it back to the 31st. Let's see if that fixes what we need. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, that, that's all you had to do. Um, and the reason that this is helpful, and oftentimes you'd have several years worth of data in here. Um, and then you could have, you could do even do something like this, um, like this one where it has multiple lines. The reason that this is helpful is because if I'm telling my friend, let's, I mean, just, I'm going to say it's a friend uh, or business partner, whatever you, whatever you want to use this use case for. I'm going to tell him, Hey, the beginning of January, all the way until like, you know, even f February, it's like really low. It's half. So there's not a lot of people traveling because everyone travels when? At the end of the year. So in November, December for the holidays to visit family, um, and then in the summer for vacations, I would tell him just based off this one thing, I would say, hey, over the summer and then at the end of the year and during the holidays, that's when I would be renting out your Airbnb. 
okay? So just this one very simple visualization can help him understand the best times um, to do that. That may have been intuitive. You may have already known that, but you can prove it with the data, which is always really helpful. Um, and let's see, is there anything else that we need to do with this? Uh, I'm just going to label it and I'm going to say um, revenue for a year. Let's do bold, do apply. There we go. Did I label this last one? I didn't. Let's label that last one. And we'll do price per zip code. Price per zip code. We'll just keep it at that. Let's keep it simple. Um, and let's do that. All right. I believe we have two more. So we have done. Um, We've done three of them. Um, we got the zip codes. We've got the um, you know the time of the year. Now, something else that he was wanting to know is um, you know just how things affect it, and something that's going to affect the price of the actual Airbnb is going to be the amount of bedrooms. So the the larger the house, the more bedrooms, the more it's going to cost typically. So we can take a look at that. Let's pull in these bedrooms. Um, and that will be our columns. Uh, no, it won't. What we need to do, um, and so I, I knew this was going to happen. I just forgot it until right uh, until right now. What we this right now is actually a um, it's a, a value, right? So it's a number, and that's totally um, reasonable because if we go right here, we do count distinct. That's because there's only seven values, right? It goes. There's zero bedrooms, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to seven bedrooms. Right now it has it as a numerical value. We want to um, change that to create it as um, these measure names, not a value. So we're going to um, we're going to remove this. We're going to go right down here. We're going to click this drop down, and we're going to say convert to dimension. And so now we're going to add it as a dimension. So there, that looks um, much more normal. I really quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep these in here for a second, but we're gonna get rid of these nulls and zeros because if a home has zero bedrooms, that's a problem. Um, and so we want to look at the price again. Let's go down here in the listings. It should be the price. Now this is the price for the location per day. Um, if you want to look at monthly or or you know stuff like that, they have that data. Um, but we're just gonna do the price the average price, not the sum. Um, although this is helpful, so just really quick before we change it, this is gonna show you which ones make the, which ones are bringing in the most money. It also may show you which ones are the most common. Um, those are all different visualizations that we can do, but the one that brings in the most money uh, that brought in 63, or that has $63 million worth of, um, worth of listings, so, they all add up. Those one bedrooms are doing phenomenal. Half of that uh, are two bedrooms at 30 million, three bedrooms at 18 million, and, and so on and so forth. So there's a ton of one bedroom ones. We may even keep, we could even keep that in there, um, you know, if we wanted to. Um, and then we do something similar later, but you can keep something like this in there. What we will do really quick though is we're going to do the same thing that we've been doing is keeping average. Um, and we are going to get rid of this because if it doesn't have the bedrooms, you know, that's not helpful to us. And if it has zero bedrooms, that's uh, that's genuinely a problem. I will not be renting an Airbnb with my family uh, that has zero bedrooms in it. So now we have this. And it would be really helpful to be able to see that in the visualization. I mean, it's just kind of hard to see it as is. I mean, it just does not hurt to add that right here. Mm -hmm. Do a label. Um, why is it angled like that? Maybe I just need to move it out more. That looks much better. Um, that's the average price. That cannot be right. That's the sum. That's why. So let's go over here. Let's make that average as well. Much better because uh, if the price was $3 million for a three bedroom, I would not be going there. So this is really, really useful information for our friend, right? If 
Um, he wants to, you know, get into those one, that one bedroom area. You know, you're not going to be making a lot of money. It may be low cost up front, but he's not going to be making a lot of money. It significantly goes up when you reach these five and six bedroom homes, which makes sense. I mean, if it has five or six bedrooms in it, it's probably a really large, really nice home and you can charge a lot more money. And our friend is uh, extremely wealthy. He can buy whatever he wants. And so he may be looking at these um, larger ones, seeing that there's a much higher return um, on his investment, the higher and the more bedrooms he goes. So we're going to keep it just as it is. Um, and let me see if there's anything else that we want to do with this. No, we're going to keep it just like this. Uh, and the last one is by far the easiest. And we actually just discussed it a little bit. We want to know, you know, what's his competition look like? So um, for those, for the bedrooms specifically. So let's go back up to the bedrooms. We want that one to be right here in our rows. So we show um, these. And then we just want to count of um, how many listings there are. So we can do that via the listings ID. So here's our listings. Each ID represents one location or one home. So we're going to do that right here. Uh, that looks absolutely terrible. That looks terrible. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, let me see. Um, one thing we need to do is we want to get rid of these nulls and zeros. Do that really quick. Um, and then we don't want to do just the ID because I <laughs> I'm realizing now uh, what I'm doing. I need to convert this to a numeric so we can do a count on it. So let's, um, oops, let me see, what, what is happening? This is terrible. All right, let's put this back. Let's make, let me see if I can just um, do an attribute. Let's do the count and let's do text. Um, no, it needs to be a distinct count because that's, that's basically like, um, a count of the numbers themselves, not each individual ID. Okay. It took some figuring out. I'm going to keep that in there because you guys need to see, uh, a, a lot of you guys like seeing when I make mistakes. So, you know, it makes it feel like when you make mistakes, it's okay. Um, and I'm all about that. So I'm leaving that in there. You guys can see me fail a little bit. Um, I just forgot how to do that for a second. And this is exactly what we're looking for, right? We want, we now, it showed us in that visualization that we were looking at earlier before we um, switched it to the average price. This is showing us that there are, for one bedrooms, there's 1,800 one bedroom, two that 483, three that 206, four that 55, only five that have 20, and six that have five. So the more you go up, the less and less it is, or the less and less competition there's going to be. Now, is there a lot of demand for four bedroom, five bedroom, six bedroom? Uh, that's for our friend to figure out. Um, well, maybe we'll help them out with that later um, in the with the data. You know, we could look at the reviews that we had. Um, there's so much data in here, and we could absolutely figure that out. But for what it's worth, we're giving him this initial stuff, and he'll have follow up questions for us later. That's how it always works. I promise. Um, so now we're good with this one. Let's label this one. Did I label the last one? I will go back and look. Um, distinct, I, I'm going to butcher this one. I'm going to do a distinct count of, of bedroom listings. I don't, that may not make sense at all, but we're keeping it. So we're going to do bedroom, apply, okay. Let me see if I added the label on this one. I didn't. Let me do that real quick. We'll do average price per bedroom. Again, I'm, oops, you didn't see that. I'm just going with whatever is coming to my head. This probably wouldn't be what I would keep if I had this or like an actual project, but it works for now. So we have our five visualizations, one, two, three, four, and five, and let's create our dashboard. That's going to be this button right here. So we're going to click that. We are going to uh, go right here. I'm going to say automatic because we want to use this entire area. And so now we're just going to start, um, you know, pulling them over. And I'm just going to start from the very first one and go to the very last one. Keep it really simple. So this very first one, we'll pull it over. 
it you know it's going to take up the entire space until you start adding all the other ones we'll include this one right here um, and well let's leave it as it is you know we'll adjust it uh, once it gets to its final place now we have number three we'll add this one on this side it looks terrible right now but give it a second uh, and then we have number four we're gonna add that across the top okay it's already starting to look a little better and um, maybe I, add, I you don't have to keep this in here um, but you definitely can uh, let's start to adjust things a little bit to do, do oops okay let's see if I can zoom in one more no I'm gonna do it just like that actually let me see if I can make it even just a little bit closer perfect uh, that's the best you're gonna get um, if you didn't see I use this um, magnifying and then I could click on the area that I wanted to see so we're gonna keep that just like that we're gonna move this over because that is um, definitely not as important um, and then we're gonna move this way over as well to keep it just like that again this is something where if you want to you can click on this um, it didn't I don't know why uh, I can't remember how to get this connected but it's, you definitely can um, but oh, okay I was just clicking on the wrong one that's why that is why but you can click over here and you you know it'll filter um, based on so if I go to this one oops dang oh geez what am I doing Oh, this is a travesty. Okay, let's try to get this back. All right, I'm not touching it, guys. You get the gist. You can mess around with it yourself. I'm not messing this up. Okay, so the next thing we need to add is the very last one. That's going to go right up here. And then we're just going to kind of move it off to the side. And uh, let's see. I'm going to add... Yeah, I have this caption. Um, if you've never seen something like this before, um, and I actually want to make this bigger as well. Oh, geez, give me a second. It's it's kind of lagging a little bit. And make this a little bit taller. Nah, maybe I don't want it as wide, but I definitely want it a little taller. Give it a second. Yeah, let me scooch this back. Just like that. That's fine. Uh, we can keep it like that. In my original one, I didn't have this. Um, you can get rid of this if you want. You know, you can um, you know, just exit out right here if you want to do that. But there you have it. Uh, this is the entire thing. So we started from the very start. Um, we started with this one then this one. Uh, did some, um, and this is, you know, all the zip, all of our zip code work. Then we took a look at the calendar where we looked at the price and did some time series visualization. And then we're looking at the bedrooms and, and the count of bedrooms. And so this should be really helpful for our friend. It should be an initial dashboard to get him going. And once he sees this, he's going to have a million other questions and he's going to want another dashboard for different data that's in there. He's going to ask about, Okay, well, what if I want to do it weekly or, you know, I want to rent it out for the month or, you know, how many um, reviews are people, five star reviews are people giving on, you know, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. These are all things that, you know, he may ask and then we'd have to build out in the real world. This is what happens all the time. You know, they make a request and then they're like, oh, this is great, but I also want this. So, um, you know, your friend is, is going to be right in line with just about everyone else. Um, that has ever gotten a dashboard uh, for work or for personal use. With that being said, this is it. Um, we have done the entire thing. Now, if you want to share this, it is super, super easy to share. Um, and I'm gonna try to remember how to share it. Uh, so we're gonna do save to Tableau public as, and we're gonna do this and we're gonna make it, um, let's do air B and B. Is it like, is it a capital B? Is it like that? No, that doesn't look right. Airbnb, uh, we'll do full project and we'll save. And that is being created right now. Um, and I will save this. So if you guys want to go look at this, you can. Um, 
and I'll provide a link in the description as well for that and see if yours looks um, similar to mine or better than mine. Give it a second because it's thinking. All right, so here it is. So here's our final, our final project. Um, and if you followed step by step, then you should get this exact or very, very similar to this one. Again, I encourage you to, if you want to have the up-to-date data, to go to that um, link in the description that has um, the, the most recent data. And they update that, I believe, monthly. So you can go there, get the most recent data, and then you can do stuff. And you can create a beautiful project just like this, um, but with the, you know, the most recent data. Again, I use the Kaggle data, just so you guys can remember. And I encourage you to look at the different data points that are in the Excel. There is so much in there. And you can use... Uh, honestly, like there's probably 30 or 40 other fields that you could be using in there that we never even touched. Um, but for this project, we're keeping it pretty simple. And so go do that, make completely unique dashboards and, and visualizations and create projects and add it to your portfolios so that you can create uh, a fantastic portfolio website and get a job. And that's what this is all about. Um, it's about upskilling and, and getting these skills that you can you know, get a job or, or do better in your job. So I hope this has been helpful. I really appreciate you guys joining me and in, in doing this entire project with me. I have no idea how long this is. This probably this could be like an hour for all I know. Um, so thank you so much for sticking with me this entire time. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below and I will see you in the next video.